How's it going, everyone? John here, the host of Spear Talk. You might not know this, but before I record an episode, I like to break a sweat. And I do that using the Chop Fit. Over the course of the past year, the Chop Fit has allowed me to lose weight, tone up my body, and feel even more amazing about myself. A feeling that you should all feel about yourselves as well. If you use this code, SpearChop10, you get $10 off your order. Once again, use code SpearChop10 for $10 off your Chop Fit order. It'll change your life. Thank you. How's it going, everyone? Uh, John here, the host of Spirit Talk. And today we have the incredible Marjean Holden, uh, actress, stunt woman, author, uh, martial artist, does incredible work with veterans. Um, and once again, it's great to have you here today, uh, Marjean. Uh, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, so to kind of touch, push, push this back, one the, you were the first people I wanted to kind of have on this podcast. And it, it's taken me now almost a year to the state where I started this because of COVID. And I wanted to reach out oh. to actresses or actors or people that people would know on TV or television, but mm -hmm. the individuals have really cool backgrounds with actual right. martial arts or right a author with different backgrounds or veteran work and you kind of check off all the boxes. So it's, it's really <laughs> cool to kind of have you here today. Well, thank you. I'm glad that I can check so many boxes off. That's awesome. So I know the last year has been kind of a wash for everyone. Um, but, uh, how have you kind of stayed busy? Has your creativity changed at all your mental health, your physical health? Like how have you kind of used this time of this last year or so to kind of push yourself forward? Wow, you just like kind of hit on like everything in the <laughs> in one fell swoop. Um, no, the last year for me, I know for a lot of people, it's like kicked them into creativity. For me, it's done the exact opposite. Like it took wow. put me in total shutdown. Yeah, total shutdown, total depression, mental health. Now, because for me, what I'm normally doing is I'm out there leading seminars, out working with people all the time. So to not be in a situation with a lot of people, it's like my creativity just sort of like, like everything just like squeezed and dried up. So it's been a real challenge for me mentally to stay in a, in a good space for the right. last year. Yeah. Now I kind of want to jump into your book here because I was kind of blown away. Like you, you, your power of the goddess stuff and all the mm -hmm. stuff you talk about, is this something that would be directly affected by this, this lack oh. of, so how does that kind of, can so, you write a new book now based on this? Um, you know what, possibly. Yeah. Like the, uh, the effects of, you know, there are certain people that, you know, one of the things I do is, um, is I help people through this modality called discovering your sacred gifts. And everybody has, a certain number of gifts that they're given by God when they're, you know, born and then they're cultivated over time. So one of my gifts is encouragement. And when I'm in an environment where there's a lot of people or I'm in that sort of group aspect, <clears throat> that gift kicks in. Gotcha. And when I'm not around people, it just sort of dries up and shrivels up and, and basically dies. So for me, um, not being around people to actually give that to. Yeah. It's one thing like, sure. I could get a group together online and that does feel okay to a certain degree, but by nature, people are, you know, we used to live in tribes, right? You know, like innately in our DNA, we lived in tribes. So everybody in the tribe sort of has their, place right right and does their thing like even a tribe say say in the military you're on a squad on a squadron you're in a group and you watch each other's backs you work together that energy feeds each other so right. everybody being some people really love being isolated and others it's like oh my god God. So for me, as a, you know, in that sort of goddess, power of the goddess, female aspect, right? you know, I sort of vibe and feed off of other people's energy. And now the last year, most of the energy I've been feeling is that 
depressed fear, that push down, that oppression that people are starting to now go, no, I, I can't do this. You know, and they're right. sort of like, you know, and it's good because people are breaking out of it and breaking through it. However, it's been pretty intense for me. Well, you, <laughs> you like, have a really cool point Ugh. where it's like after the last year and we're not, obviously we're not going to talk politics with the right. pandemic and stuff, but <clears throat> it is fascinating to see where people as a collective whole reach their breaking point where it's like, yeah. you know what? I've been inside for this last year. My kids need to go to the playground with other kids yeah. or yeah. I need to go to my AA meeting in person because you know what? Yeah. These Zoom calls just are the physicality is lacking. And I, it's, yes. I'm glad to see people breaking out, but they can do it safely. And that's really encouraging. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think, yeah, you're right. Let's not go down that political right. road. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, then my sword will really come out and it'll be like, ah! I'm into it. Full, full Shiva. Uh, so, <laughs> totally. Uh, you grew up in a, a, a family with entertainers. And is yep. this something where, not pressure to partake, but were there other things you kind of wish you could have done had it your family not been entertainers and all this whole, the gobbit of entertainment itself? Did you feel like a need to continue through that? No, I mean, I always wanted to be in entertainment. I always wanted to do that. I, but, you know, most of the entertainment in my family, they're singers, musicians, you know, they write music, <laughs> they play music. Um, and that kind of entertaining. And for me, I just didn't have that gift. Like it is a gift. So I'm like, you know, I don't, don't really play the piano. I don't, you know, I, I've played around with it and I've, you know, taken some lessons, but I'm like, yeah, that wasn't really my thing. So the acting was always uh, more, you know, who, for me, naturally who I, right. you know, what I gravitated towards, right? And then after, you know, so many years of being in, you know, in front of the camera like that, then started meeting, you know, a lot of people in the industry on the stunt side. So a lot of my friends were stunt people, stunt coordinators, you know, et cetera. And I was sort of in this really unique position when um, in, I think it was 1990, 92, 93. And I was working on a film and one of the gals who was a stunt woman, <clears throat> her husband came to set and he was a stunt coordinator. And we got to know each other and we talked and he was like, would call and go, hey, you know, I know you're like this big actress and stuff, but I have this stunt job and we need a black girl. <laughs> and I'm like, gotcha. oh, okay. He's like, because the other three at the time were booked. Because there really weren't that many. And he's like, right. you know, and you're tall and whatnot. He goes, it'll, you know, it's not going to be a hard job. It, it'll it be, you know, super, you know, nondescript and nondistinct. And I went, okay. He's like, so go meet this other stunt coordinator. And, you know, maybe you can, you know, get a job on this this little film and double this person doing this stunt and it was my first stunt job the stunt director the stunt coordinator's name was gary himes <laughs> and he's oh, one wow. of the biggest stunt yeah. coordinators oh, in the yeah. industry and he gave me my first stunt job and That's it awesome. was on speed the movie speed and after that i was like wow you know just the like going back to that whole tribe thing Yep. <clears throat> the camaraderie of the stunt team was so different than what I had experienced with acting. Cause actors are, you know, we stay in our trailer, like until we're ready to go, you know, we stay in character or whatever we're doing. And the stunt team kind of like, like let's stay together, like talk about what's going to happen in the actual, you know, the, the stunt, right. you go here, you go there. It's all a team. We're all working together. And to ensure that everybody's going to be safe, you know, actors included. So then it just became like, wow, this is, this is kind of cool. And I started doing more and more stunts and did stunts for about 10 years. One of our uh, loyal listeners, Rebecca, had this really cool question for you. When uh -huh. you were acting or stunt work, 
is there ever times where you are actually on screen as the main actor or actress, but you also have to do your own stunt work? Does that ever get in the way of making the actual acting job uh, different? Because now you have to focus really on your fit, your health and your safety now too. Um, for me, it wasn't a big deal. For because I'd always been an athlete, I'd always trained, like I had done my martial arts and and done that stuff. So for it, for me, it wasn't a big deal. And part of the problem with that is like, I'm six feet tall. And right. so there were no other actresses or set <laughs> women to double me. So I was like, well, it's beneficial for everybody that I just do it myself. Right. I have had stunt doubles in the past. And like, it's really clear <laughs> that it was a stunt double. Like there's a body shape, just very different. It's like my legs are super long. My body's kind of short. You know, it's like, even though I'm six feet tall, it's like my inseam's 36 and my right. torso is really short. So it's like, you know, it was always the joke when I'd sit at the table. It's like, I was like the little kid at the table, <laughs> you know? Well, how, how is but it then the I stand up make, and- Do the producers, the director, or whoever's the, the insurance for these films, are they the, do they value you- in front of the camera that much more where they're like, Hey, in case she does get hurt, we can't lose her for this the actual TV role. Is that why they, because why not just have you yes. switch played this? Yeah, it is a, it is an insurance thing for them. Right. And sometimes if it's something they're like, yeah, it's not just, um, as an example, um, I did an episode of Star Trek, deep space nine. Yep. And part of the stunt was, doing a high fall over a railing into a pad. And the stunt coordinator was like, yeah, no. Huh. Because the producers were like, for insurance purposes, no, we have to have somebody double you. And so Dennis Madelon, absolutely brilliant. And the way in which he shot the stunt woman, LaFay Baker, who's one of the right. you know top yep. top stunt women in the in the business. You know, the way he shot her, because we we have such a height difference, but the way in which he shot her going over the railing, like you couldn't tell because of the angle. So that was the beauty of that. And it was, you know, so the producers do actually, they will go, um, yeah, not that one. Right. Sorry. <laughs> you know, but few and far between for me. One of my favorite movies uh, is the movie Blade. Um, uh -huh. And you, obviously you just start work with that. But for a movie like that, where there's weapons, swords, martial arts, different forms of fighting, how creative are you allowed to get in terms of really staging some of these fight scenes? Because I can, I can only imagine that last 30 minutes of Blade, there's so much going on. And one wrong mistake or wrong hit, you could seriously injure someone. And so right. how fun is that to kind of work with a team, like you said, to put together these extravagant movie fight scenes? You know, it really, it is a lot of fun and it is a lot of work. And sometimes those sequences are rehearsed for weeks and, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks before going in front of the camera to make sure that, you know, the timing's right and everything is, you know, cohesive before you get on set so that, you know, A, there's not a lot of time wasted and B, it's not, you know, everybody's safe. So, right. yeah. You mentioned uh, boxing and martial arts growing up. How did you kind of get started with that? Was that just like a, while these kids and everyone else plays instruments, I want to get in the gym type thing? Like, how did you <laughs> pick the martial art you wanted to learn? You know, um, that's a funny story. Um, I grew up like doing my sports. My dad and I took karate when I was really young. Oh, wow. like, I think I was 12 or 13, but that only lasted very, you know, very short time because for me it just didn't you know shotokan right. karate it didn't you know one belt two belts and i was like eh, not really that interesting when i moved to la i met um mark dacascos oh, and his style you know and dated him for a few years and that style that he that his dad you know, yep. created and, and put out into the world was really much more fluid for my body and for my, for my type. So that's what I, you know, sort of gravitated towards. And then 
one of um, Sifu Al's students became a Sifu, um, my Sifu, Sifu Earl, white, and oh, wow. trained with him for for 10 years. Yeah. Super, super so, awesome. Yeah. And that's super cool. I just love how it's funny how you talk to different actors or martial arts, how they kind of get their start in, with martial arts or boxing. It's, it's very fascinating how it usually starts with a chance training with a father figure or uh-huh. a brother or sister and it kind of you kind of morph into your own it's, it's really cool to hear you you kind of did the one thing with your father that hey i want to do this and for you to do that's pretty that's pretty awesome yeah it was and it was great because like all of us that trained together like we were all you know in the film industry and we trained together and then everybody would go off and do their films and come back and train and you know put their their martial art to, you know, to use in the film industry. So it was really, you know, and it was really fun to see everybody's progression and to see where it was taking everybody. I didn't keep up with it after, you know, it's like it would be here and there. Right. But um, for 10 solid years, we, uh, we hit it hard. (laughs) One of my guilty pleasure movies is World Combat Annihilation. And I Uh love that it's just, I, I, I hope he's not even worth for it. it just for me it just summed up my childhood playing the video games i loved that all the characters but especially your character of shiva like there's i don't think there could really be anyone that could play that character then or now but part of me felt like you couldn't obviously use your real martial arts or it seemed like your role was trimmed down where i wish there was more for your character do you have any of those type of like resentment for that. And we, we don't have to name names, but I know with the new Mortal Kombat movie out, yeah, uh, I went back and rewatched Annihilation. I'm like, yeah, this thing had so many cool characters. Shiva being one of them. Yeah. It would have been really cool if you actually got like a proper like fights and stuff of this. Yeah, that was actually one of the um, reasons why I really wanted to do the role because there was a fight that was written in there for Shiva and Raiden. Oh, man. And I was like, oh, yeah, this makes it, you know, yeah. makes it worth it, you know. Yeah. And I played the the character and, you know, played the game. Really was like, yeah, this is great. You know, it was one of the toughest um, parts I had ever had, you know, worked really hard to get. There were, I had my initial audition and six callbacks. So it was like when they finally came through and were like, yeah, you got the role. It was like, yes, great. And by the time I showed up to work on set, they decided they were going to cut that fight out. And so I just, I was like, you know, it's no secret. It's like at that time, it's like I went to the producers even. And I said, you know what? You might as well just cut the character out. Because right. if she's not going to fight. Right. Because I, cause I, I knew, you know, from just from the way people reacted to the character just in, you know, blogs or blog, whatever. There weren't even vlogs back then. But in blogs and in talking on different things that Sheba was like, they were like, yeah, we can't wait to see that fight with Sheba. Oh, my God, it's going to be awesome. And then it was just like, what? And I said, you're going to piss a lot of people off. Basically, I said, the fans are going to be like, I feel ripped off. I feel let down. And they were like, no, 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 we have to have the character in the movie. And it was really, you know, it's sort of like this struggle for the whole time we were shooting, knowing that this fight was never going to happen. Well, it's for me, it's like, obviously, there's those video games and that those movie, that movie franchise has strong female characters. But Shiva was the first, like, truly bad, bad, like, monster woman. It's like, there's that whole female empowerment thing that she could fight the bad, she could fight the good guys, she could kill the good guys. And it seemed like, now I know why, it seemed like a cheap way to just be like, have you up there as a general. And maybe that's just me because I'm a fan of the game and the character. But it's super, (laughs) uh, that's super... uh, that's super, that kind of bums me out. Yeah, it bummed a lot of people out, not just you. So it bummed a lot of people out. I just read a um, a narrative um, on YouTube or, or watched a narrative on YouTube. Yep. And um, it was actually a really good summary of Shiva. Now I can't even remember. I'd have to look it up. Um, can't even remember like the guy that actually put it together. But he actually read 
from the comic book or from the book, from the novel yes. about the fight, you know, with Shiva and Raiden, and then was sort of comparing it to the movie and back and forth. And I went on and I said, Hey, that was a really good summary and a really good narrative that you did of Shiva. And I really wanted to say thank you because in yeah. all of these years, it was like the most comprehensive and true, um, sort of review that I had seen of the character or heard of the character. So I was like, thank you so much. And he was like, is this really you? <laughs> and I said, yeah, it's really me. You the know, goddess of death. I, yep. yeah, I don't, I, you know, it's like, I'm not good at like disguising myself online. It's like, if, if it's my profile, it's my profile, you know, it's like, right. I don't, yeah. Well, a movie that, uh, where you did have a badass fight scene, ballistic. And uh-huh. for a movie like that, how fun is that to really go toe to toe with a counterpart where it's like you guys could have some, have some real fun with this? Oh my God. We had a blast. And even though, are you talking about me and Corey Everson? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Corey and I, we had so much fun shooting that fight. And, you know, we were both like, you know, decent shape, you know, worked out all the time. And two days after that fight, we were like, Oh my God, are you sore? And we were so sore and so stiff because, you know, training is one thing, but shooting a fight for 12 hours of the day is totally different, totally different. So it's like, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, you know, punch, kick, punch, kick, react, 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 completely different. So we felt it. We totally felt it, but we had such a blast and we would, we just laughed, you know, we would laugh all day long. It's, yeah, uh, it you've also done John Carpenter's Vampires. You mentioned uh-huh. a bunch of the Star Trek show. Do you, do you like getting, playing these characters that are, uh, it's like how you, you just, you kind of hide inside these characters where, yeah, we know it's Marjean, but <laughs> here you're a vampire Lord master or you're a four arm creature or you are a, space creature or you're the beast world universe do you like playing with different makeup and different costumes does that make it that much more fun for you with these roles it totally you know it really all of that adds to um you know just finding the truth of the character you know it's like i couldn't you know run around just in my normal clothes in the jungle playing arena you know it just wouldn't it wouldn't lend to i don't care how great of an actress i am or not to say i'm a great actress but you know for me the whole package really is like that that catalyst to really bring forth you know what's happening with the character what are your similarities you think to arena from beastmaster is there anything there where how what different <laughs> the character to yourself yeah. in real life arena was really stubborn and very strongly opinionated and i'd say yep that's that was very similar <laughs> Gotcha. <laughs> you know, of course, I don't like in my everyday life run around, you know, kicking people, be impressive, you know, asses. But um, sometimes, in, you know, the last little while I wanted to. <laughs> yep. Now, for the stunt work for a show like that, I can imagine huh? there's a lot of a lot of people doing stunts because it's it seemed like there's a lot going on. So is there a lot of sitting around, too? Or how do you fill the stunt parts first and then? kind of flesh out the rest of the seeds for those shows? You know, that was a really um, interesting show where we shot five days of main unit and two days of second unit. So we were on a five and two, what's called a five and two for production. So one episode would shoot for five days and then have two days of second unit where most of the fight stuff would happen. If any of the action was happening was on those two days And in that two days, another five day on another episode would start. So it could be that I was doing second unit on one episode for those, you know, in those two days, but also doing main unit at the same time for a different episode. Um, So it was, you know, on those days where it's that two days of action, it was usually just 
you know, constant for those two days. So there wasn't a whole lot of sitting around. There's more sitting around on main unit with, you know, with the acting and the dialogue and things like that than there was with the action because the action days were that designed just for that. It's like action, just boom, boom, boom. Okay. We've got three fight scenes that we've got to do, you know, before lunch. So, you know, we got five hours, three fight scenes, all angles for, for, you know, for the episode and, you know, three location changes, (laughs) you know, So it was like pretty, pretty quick. And our crew was amazing because they were, you know, our second unit crew was so amazing that, you know, it was like, okay, here we go. Boom, 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 boom. We worked with the same directors, the same crew. So everybody was really dialed in. I like that. Yeah, Uh, it was really fun. You you kind of touched it, but our friend Lori, a friend of the show, was wondering, as a female, not only the martial arts world, but stunt work, is it, was it difficult to break in? And how do you kind of deal with working in a male dominated environment um, where there's not a lot of female stunt women, there's not a lot of female martial arts. Like how did you kind of process that where you have to stand out, but not only represent females, but a profession like stunt work that not a lot of females have the opportunity to get a chance to try. Right. Oh, gosh, that's a the, uh, loaded question. At the time, it was a lot more, um, a, a lot more challenging, you know, because that was right. 20 <clears throat> some seven years ago, 25, right. 27 years ago, you yep. know, for me. Um, so, God, even longer than that. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, but it was, you know, for me, getting into the stunt work, I didn't go, I, I sort of went the the opposite way. So it's like I went into acting first and acting, you know, there were so many people in it, right? right. That it was sort of like, you know, whenever I was auditioning, I was always going up against the Vivica Foxes and the Halle Berries and, you know, the Garcelle Beauvais. So it's like, I really, you know, or Lynn Whitfield or, or all of the bigger, you know, right. actresses in the film and in the industry. And it's like, oh, well, no, I might not get that part because, you know, Halle Berry's here for, you know, X-Men, Storm. So it was a lot more challenging to get an acting role for me than to get to know the stunt coordinators and when there were a lot of action pictures happening and they needed a diverse, you know, like just even ND players for, you know, say like a movie like Taxi, right? Where there's a lot of, right. of people on the street and, you know, staying out of the way of a, of a car flipping over or something like that. There was a lot more opportunity actually for me. And <clears throat> being in the, you know, in, the, in a minority category, for me, it was really a blessing. It was such a blessing. There's way more opportunity now than right. ever for females in the stunt industry. Way more. Because the whole, you know, it just, it opened up. You know, it opened up about 10, 15 years ago. And more women are coming through. Anyone who has, you know, a lot of the women in the in the industry have a background either in martial arts or in stunt uh, driving or in um, gymnastics, especially anyone that has any swimming capability, scuba diving, um, platform diving, uh, horse work, motorcycles. Right. Oh my Special god! Special skills, right. Special skills like that, and there's just. There's way more opportunity now than there has ever been, ever. And it's a matter of just like any other, you know, profession, it's going out and meeting. Yes, there are etiquettes to how you hustle a stunt coordinator, how you get in. But there's a lot more services now online that you can put your picture up, you can put your information up, you know, stunt directories, you know, Wally Crowder started the first stunt players directory and that stunt directory, you know, you can put yourself in it and you list all your skills and here's my pictures. And so stunt coordinators just have that book and they can look and go, okay, who do I need? 
Do I need someone to double somebody? Do I need, you know, just somebody with certain skills? And they can look through that and say, oh, I love yep, that. there's someone with that. And let me bring them in, see if the producers like them, and then go from there. I've always loved when actors, uh, like some, say something like Tom Cruise or Vin Diesel or The Rock, the first people they usually thank are their stunt doubles or yeah. their stunt teams, especially if they're these big summer blockbuster movies. I've, I've always wondered, how come stunt individuals like yourselves, men and women, how come they don't, there's no cabbie awards or really prestigious awards for these men and women that literally put their lives on the line to make these actors look really good. Is this just like a, is this, oh, you guys <laughs> not want that? Is that kind of fit the mystique of the stunt people or would it be kind no. of cool to get a cabbie award for it? <laughs> there is an award. It's the Taurus Stunt Awards. Okay. Um, they have been, oh gosh, how long now? I did the very first, we did a we did a, we did, did a gag on the very first one. What year was that? It was 1990. Oh gosh, I can't even remember. I'd have to look at my information. But the Taurus Stunt Awards okay. are specifically for stunt players. And for years and years, um, Julie Michaels and Pee Wee Pimonti have been fighting and fighting to try to get a category in the Academy Awards and in the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. There's finally a category in the, uh, the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences for stunt coordinating and for second unit for that. And part of it is that, you know, a lot of times actors, they don't want people to know that they're not the ones doing the stunts. You know, it's been a, Which, it's been a very, it's like, oh, I have to, you know, I, I've got to maintain this ego, this image when it's like, we all know that that's not them out there flipping around, you know, Tom Cruise being one of the exceptions because he does do a lot of his own stunts. He does have a stunt double, um, but he does do a lot of his own stuff uh, under very, very yes. close watch, <laughs> but you know, it's like a lot of the actors, they, they don't want people to know when, you know, it's sort of like the the man behind the curtain, right? The woman right. behind the curtain. But it's 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 very, um, yeah. So they fought a long time and very hard to get recognized for their work because it's an art. It is just like acting. Right. Is you hone your skills as an actor you hone your skills in the stunt industry. You know, the amount of rigging that goes into a lot of this stuff, you know, and you've got somebody's life in your hands. Right. Literally. Right. You know, and, you know, it's like I've, I've have friends that, you know, they've had stunts gone wrong and they're no longer with us. So it's an art. It really is. And it needs to be recognized. And it's and it's taken years and years for those right. you know, little platforms to kind of say, oh, oh, and yeah, oh, yeah, there's actually a stunt person behind that person. Right. <laughs> right. Cameron Diaz really can't drive on fire through a brick wall. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Right. Sorry. right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Cameron. <laughs> uh, so I guess in terms of if you could – there, do you have any specific stunts you've done, say one or two, that you really love? Or is there is, is there one that you wish you could kind of redo? I Oh, gosh, that I really loved. I mean, all of them have been fun, except right. for the odd exception of them. Um, if I could redo them. I don't think I'd redo any of them. As, as a stunt woman, when you watch but, a movie now or a TV show, do you look at some of the stuff and be like, I could do that better or they should have done this? Do you always, can you ever shut that off and just enjoy the TV show or movie? Every once in a while. If it's, if I'm watching something that is outside of, you know, like my range or my scope of things that I do, I always go, oh, wow, I'd love to be able to do that. Right. right. As opposed to, you know, it's like sometimes if I see a fight and it's like, it's just horribly wrong. Um, it's like, I'm not the best at, you know, setting things up or anything, but you know, it's like when it's a clear miss and it's like, they leave it in, it's like, Oh man, like even the, 
the untrained eye can go, that doesn't, that doesn't look right. <laughs> or that didn't look right. It didn't even look like it connected, you know, because there's a certain way in which, you know, you have to angle the camera in order for it to actually look like, you know, somebody's hitting somebody in the face. <laughs> you know? So yeah, and for a long time, it was like, God, I just want to go watch a film and then just enjoy it, as opposed to picking it apart um, to see you know, kind of where the gaps are. Um, but that's, you know, the last couple of years, I've just sort of like, oh, let me watch something that I no wouldn't normally watch. Right. And so this kind of leads me into one of the coolest things, just doing research on you, is your, uh, this award you won, Military Order of Purple Heart, 1996 right. for the veterans. And one of our good followers, again, Kim, and I really want to know, what led you to kind of dedicate to, was this something about veterans you've always resonated with or what led you down this path to do some really cool stuff for veterans and different organizations? Well, part of it is my dad was in the army, you know? So it's like, I lived with a veteran. He was in the Korean war. And when my parent, well, my mom still lives there. My dad passed away in 2005, but he was involved with some of the veterans there in the area in Arizona. And my mom was good friends with somebody who was in a veterans organization. And so it was sort of like this natural, <clears throat> you know, she would say, Oh yeah, my daughter's an actress, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And so they would call and say, Hey, do you want to participate in this, in this event for veterans? And it's like, well, of course, you know, I have so much respect for anyone who has gone out and, you know, fought for our country or, you know, have, I've got a lot right. of family, you know, in, in the military, you know, I've got a cousin that was a Marine, another one was in the Navy, another was in the army, you know, my dad was in the army. So it's like the utmost respect and being that I've been so fortunate in the film industry, I've worked with a lot of veterans in the film industry as well. So part of it was like, like now I'm more, you know, still trying to, you know, trying to find like, where's another organization or where's something that I can, you know, support or follow or be part of, you know, in the veterans, you know, sort of capacity. So I've kind of been like, look, I look at the Wounded Warriors Project and I'll look at, um, like uh, Craig Sawman Sawyer does, you know, Veterans for Child Rescue, yes. you know, that kind of stuff is like, oh, you know, I'm not a veteran, but like, oh, I'd go out and do that right. with you guys, yeah. you know, right. <laughs> it's like, because, you know, there's, there's stuff going on out there. Yes. And yeah, but it's, uh, it's just super cool, though, because the fact you give your time back and you dedicate your life to, you can still do what you want to do, but also be yeah. kind of like a shy example for other people to kind of help other people that don't have the opportunities or the chances to kind of do uh, what you do. And that's, that's really cool. Yeah. I'm saying it's like, I'd love to love to actually do more because it's like, you know, there's so many that, you know, it's a, it's not an easy road in the military. It's like, I, I have some girlfriends that are ex army and, you know, they're like, they can tell some stories you know, of their time in Afghanistan and like, whoa, you know? Right. So, no. yeah. And trying to pick up after that with all of the, uh, you know, the programming and deprogramming that they've had right. to do. We carry the PTSD and all this yep. other stuff they see, the actual horrors, atrocities of yeah. war to the civilian life. Yeah. So what are some other projects you've got working coming on? I mean, obviously I know the industry is kind of, doing his thing again Weird. but uh <laughs> but uh anything coming up here that you're excited about or what you got coming cooking in the kitchen yeah i got one you know i got a couple of things cooking in the kitchen a project that a friend of uh, mine for that i met on beastmaster is putting together over in australia oh, awesome. um which you know it's like been you know real slow going it's a huge franchise so it's like bit by bit by bit really awesome. slow going but there's a uh, another friend of mine from the Mortal Kombat days, uh, oh, shoot. old Darren McBee, who's got a script that we're he sent to my husband and I, and 
we read it and it was like, oh, this is a cool little project. It's like, let's get a bunch of us together and let's do this. So now I'm just going, okay, all right, God, you know, let's dump a dump an angel investor on us and let's make this little project. It's it's sort of like a kickback to the, you know, the 80s, like real, um, yes, you know, hand-to-hand -hand hand combat, you know. It's totally missing stuff. in action movies. Uh, kind yeah. of, I, I, now I'm thinking of this question. You mentioned Duran, Montaro, uh, huh? and Mortal Kombat Dilation. Uh, but then you have... So what would you feel about that? Robin Show, Keith Cook, uh -huh. JJ Perry, yep. uh, all these type A legit world class world totally. champion artists. <laughs> if you're like catering or craft services and still be are you guys just kind of like sizing each other up? Like how do you how do you like maintain all that like testosterone and what you got going on with uh Melina and all? Like how do you guys kind of just like like I would be so amped up just watching you guys backstage? Like how do you like how do you <laughs> How do you contain all that? Well, <laughs> it's a very human experience being uh, <laughs> behind the scenes with all of that, you know, because first and foremost, we're, in, you know, on Mortal Kombat, like we, we became a family, right? right? So it was sort of like, um, you know, just kind of, you know, the jokes and the kidding around and, you know, it's like the whole normal day-to-day you know, this is what yep. we're doing, you know, totally blessed to be here. And hey, or, you know, it's like if we were in Thailand, which we were for a while, and it's like, we've got one day off, where do we want to go? You know, do we want to go to the city? Do we want to go to the temples? What are we going to do? And, you know, sometimes it would be like, no, I'm sleeping. <laughs> you know, I'm sleeping for the next 24 hours. But, you know, there wasn't really, you know, just kind of like it was, it was so long ago. But thinking back at that point in time, a lot of us were, you know, we were so young in our careers, but everybody, God, I have just been, I've been so blessed on the sets that I've worked on that in the projects that I've worked on that everybody's been so super cool with the exception of me, of, you know, one or right. two, one or two, Right. I consider myself so blessed because everybody has been like the coolest, most grounded. Um, I think, you know, some of the projects that I work on because there's more like martial artists, you know, fighters, there's a more grounded aspect to it right. because martial arts is a lot of spiritual connection. So for us, it was just like, you know, Hey, get grounded, get centered, you know, it's like, are we going to, you know, have some fun and just have a good time with each other, you well know? And yeah, so I've been so blessed to work with super cool people awesome. in my career. So uh, before I let you go, I know you're on Instagram, uh, you're on Facebook, Twitter, uh, website, where can people find out what you got going on? Um, yeah, I'm the worst with my social media too, but I do have a fan page on Facebook that, um, every once in a while I go on, um, I do have my Instagram and it's all usually it's like Facebook is Margie Holden fans at Facebook and Instagram is just at Margie Holden. And you know, that's it. I kind of like, you know, trying to get websites together and going and, oh my God, I've been hopeless book, in that respect. Your, can so. your book, your book on Amazon. The book is on Amazon. Okay. Yep. Power of the Goddess. The book is on Amazon. So they can find that there. And yeah. I love so it. That's, that's this it. was so, a, uh, this was a blast, Marjeet. Oh, thank you so much. It was a really, really fun time. So awesome. look forward to it. And if there's another, uh, you know, Mortal Kombat annihilation mm -hmm. cast i can send your way let me know <laughs> uh it's funny because we've actually i've actually i'm good friends with keith cook uh-huh uh, he's I awesome have, he's done the show the spirit talk twice uh yeah. i had chris Casabasa from the first uh -huh. one um uh, i've actually talked to Duran, uh but i know he's right now in the middle of doing stuff for another thing he was part of where he can't really talk about it per se right um but uh yeah i i for whatever reason, I'm just drawn to these actual athletes, martial artists, champions. Yeah. You know, they get to play these really cool characters. And for me growing up, it's like these are the only people that can portray these characters. Right. To me. So well, thank you. Just, I appreciate that. 
<laughs> no, it's like if, if I want to be killed by Shiva, like it has to be you. It can't right. be Shiva. <laughs> it can't be anyone else. It's got to be you. So this is okay. super awesome. <laughs> Done. So thank you for this. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you all for checking out this week's episode. Once again, I'm John. If you liked what you heard and saw today, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And check out our brand new merch store with hats, coffee mugs, t-shirts, other cool stuff coming down the pipeline. Again, thank you all for support. Be safe and see you next week. <laughs>